Ace Podcast. This is the Super Co-op Squad Video Game Podcast, Episode 56. On today's show, we'll discuss Sony and their new plan to convert your achievements and trophies into online currency. We'll also discuss EA's purchase of Titanfall developer Respawn Studios and what this means for EA and possibly Call of Duty. And lastly, a new Star Wars trilogy. The Force is strong with Disney as they announced a new trilogy going to be ran and directed by none other than Star Wars Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson. We'll get into those things, and of course, we will always have our gaming segments, Name the Game, Fan Favorites, and Gamer Trivia. All right, guys, welcome to yet another episode of the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Johnny Mack, and I'm here with my friends and fellow hosts, Garrett Laney. Hello. And Joshua Gerard. Get help. Get help. Is that Mega Man? No. You'll find out later. Oh, okay. Yep, so... If you guys don't know, now you are going to know who we are. We are the Super Co-op Squad, and every week uh, we sit down together to talk about the latest game reviews, news, uh, everything related to pop culture, and more specifically, gamer culture. We'll talk about those things, some other things. We'll just have some fun, and hopefully you have some fun along the way. Uh, Before we hop into our content, this is your spoiler warning. Superman, he dies, he comes back. That's what happens. It hasn't actually been confirmed yet. We know. We know. I mean, we know, but we know. is it a spoiler when it hasn't actually been seen yet? That, that's that's why it's a terrible spoiler. Fair enough. Because he's already seen the movie, <laughs> and he knows what's going to happen. He saw the sneak preview. <laughs> um, but hey, for the real spoilers, if you guys don't want to know about any content we're going to be talking about coming up, we've already announced what those uh, topics are going to be. You can also read through those in the show notes. You can find those show notes super easy. Go ahead and click the link that's going to be in the details and the description of wherever you're listening to this podcast and whatever podcast app that might be or website. That'll take you right to those show notes or go directly to our website scspodcast.com you'll be able to find the show notes there and read uh, everything along with us get a little bit more engagement a little bit more uh, that we're doing with our podcast there all right let's hop into this thing guys sony they're bringing uh, some sort of online currency essentially you'll be able to kind of trade in or cash in the trophies you earn essentially the achievements if you're an xbox uh, or uh, or steam user and you can you can cash those in and use those for uh, for money so uh, for the breakdown, uh, Joshua, thank you for giving that to us. So pretty much 100 silver trophies is 100 points. That pretty much equals a dollar. So one one silver trophy is essentially a penny, uh, whereas a gold trophy is 25 points. Uh, that's pretty much 25 cents. And a, a platinum uh, is 100 points. So pretty much a dollar for every platinum. That's what it breaks down to for sure. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So pretty much a thousand points will equal a ten dollar PlayStation Network voucher that you can then use for whatever you know content you want. Um, some 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 catches here, Joshua. So uh, go over those real quick. Yeah. So I think the idea is cool, but this is where <laughs> the two things uh, must happen. First, you must have a Sony Rewards membership, which is free. Uh, it's a membership that you can essentially earn rewards to get. Some discounts or free stuff. And it's not just PlayStation Network games. They do that for any Sony products. The other catch, which I think is just a problem. Um, well, sorry. Uh, first you must do that and then link your Sony rewards to your PlayStation Network account. There's no catch there, really. But the problem is that any trophies earned before you sign up for this program do not count towards any earned currency at all. Anything you of, that you have accumulated up to this point will not count for dollars. Yeah, so that's the big thing here. You know, people have been playing for years, you know, about a decade now with the PlayStation Network. You know, um, from PlayStation Three and, and Four, because you know all your trophies adding up together. It's been about a decade. Yeah, because they didn't launch with trophies the first year and a half, right? Almost two years. Yeah, it's been out for ten years. So that's a lot of trophies that people don't have the ability to cash in, and it's not like they could cash them in for a lot anyway. The problem I see with this though is. Say if you have any hard games that are hard to platinum that you put 10, 20, 50 for Horizon for me, 90 hours, I'm not going to get any money or any of this currency out of that playtime. I either have to get a brand new account, replay that game, or do it with new games going forward. So if you got 20 games that were very easy to platinum, you can't do that again to get quick cash. 
I mean, quick cash is kind of a, a misnomer there. Okay. Because it's quick it's credits. pennies. It's quick pennies. Credit. Well, no, I mean, even not, 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 not making fun of the cash thing, but like the fact that, you know, even if you played 20 games, how much money are you really getting out of this? Not a lot. It's no. not a lot here. Not, it's not here nor there. Mm-mm. Uh, I, I see it as somewhat fair that they don't, uh, any trophies you had previously count towards any money or, or credit. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're not getting that much, but they have what millions and millions of, of, you know, members, uh, for the PSN, they just handing out money. You know, I think that would, that would probably like hurt a lot. Well, I mean, how? It's not that they're actually giving you anything. What is, what is digital currency for digital product? Digital currency, them giving that away is taking place of real currency that they could be using for stuff that they want. Maybe, but I would argue that people who are going to buy something anyway, they're going to buy that item. Now they're just going to use that currency for the extras. Like, you know, if I had some extra, like, I'm not going to buy anything that I wasn't going to buy before with my real money. But now that I've got this fake money, this money they gave me, I might be inclined to use that on a game I wasn't going to to use it for to begin with. So, I mean, they could lose some money, but I don't I don't see it happening. Garrett, I see your point there. I think it would only hurt if you do that for like brand new titles, but then you could say any earned currency does not qualify for any titles going forward from this date. And that would solve, absolve that issue. Or, I mean, yeah, I, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, make it so it only works on games that have been out before X time. So mm-hmm. it has to be out for six months or you so. It before that time. But, but also, I mean, how many, how many platinum trophies do you have? Like, honestly. Me personally? I, I would say the average gamer has less than twenty platinum trophies. I think I think Far the average less. gamer is less than ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's actually. I, yeah. I have more than that. I have absolutely zero. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got to finish. You got to finish a game first, Garrett. Most of the time. I mean, even with the silver trophies, I'd say that most gamers again probably don't have more than a couple hundred. So even yeah, if they have bronze, a couple, bronze isn't even on here. No, they don't give you anything because no, I mean, so if silver is a penny. Yeah, yeah. Well, what could be less? Yeah, <laughs> we take money from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. So let's let's say theoretically someone has five hundred silver trophies. That's five dollars. I mean, is it really that hard to give them five dollars? That's not very I mean, much. I mean, no, it's not. But you, you think about it, like that could be a lot of people and a lot of five dollars. I mean, yeah, yes, but again, I think we, I think five hundred per person. Yeah, no, you're little, right. Is a little high. It's probably yeah, a lot lower. Absolutely. But I do see your point. You know, like I've said before, none of these companies aren't magical Christmas land companies <laughs> that give us free stuff because they're fairy folk. You know, so we got to take the good with the bad. Uh, one thing I'm kind of curious on because it's not specified anywhere that I've seen yet is when you. When you, I guess, use your trophies for credit or money, do they take away the trophies? Now, do you do you now no longer have that achievement? Hmm. They haven't gone over that yet, but I would imagine that there's like an asterisk. If they were to use old trophies or even trophies in the future, there's an asterisk saying that you've used that for currency already versus okay. like new trophies that you're earning. Yeah, like in parentheses, it'll show a dollar amount of like digital trophy currency you have that you haven't yet expended. The pennies that you have. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, we've kind of went over a little bit as far as what this thing is. Do we like or dislike, you know, the fact that the trophies, you know, it's a a small amount of money. But but I guess the thing that I want to look at is why? Like, why is what does Sony have to gain from this? Because this doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me at first look. Let's see. Only thing I can think of is that they're trying to give you a reason to go for uh, trophies. I mean, we've talked about it a couple times on this podcast that, you know, we've kind of lost a luster of achievements and trophies. Um, you know, no one, no one that we know really cares to like, Oh, I got to get, I got to 100% it. Except so maybe Joshua, cause you know, he's crazy. I'm weird like that. <laughs> but, um, may- maybe to kind of reignite that fire to kind of get people to buy more games to get these trophies, to, uh, maybe just enjoy your game more. Right now, this is, uh, something that, Sony has over Microsoft, so that's just an could be uh, one, I guess, uh, aspect of it. Yeah, I mean that this is kind of a jump that they finally have on this trophy and achievement kind of system over Microsoft and over Steam, who also has an achievement system. Um, as as you did your research, Joshua, and gave us the the notes for this particular subject. Uh, you know, you have in the notes here that Phil Spencer has already stated that he already approves of this idea and uh, mm-hmm. might implement something similar. They might have already been having something in the works uh, for themselves. Who knows? They, they typically stay pretty close together on most uh, most adjustments and announcements that they have. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, it could be that, yes, they're making achievements count again or trophies count again, excuse me. But, I mean, free money? Like, well, free pennies. Yeah, free, <laughs> free pennies. I mean, but yeah, what? I, I mean, there must, you know what? Okay, okay. The only thing I can think is we kind of glossed it over, but you have to have a Sony Rewards membership to to use this. You can't just have a PlayStation Network account. So Sony Rewards is you know some, something that you can you can spend money through Sony Rewards and then you kind of get perks for that. So this is in addition to to that program. I think they're looking to get people to buy other Sony product. Yeah, and for me, I think it's more than that. I think they're trying to get people to continue to play games on their system to build an incentive to. It's not even just about buying more games; it's being on their network. And when you're on their network, you see advertisements, you see other games on the reward site, you'll be able to see other perks as you're just saying, and it incentivizes you to stick with them, to buy stuff, to play more, uh, and that pulls away from the competition when you're doing that. Yeah, to, to add to what you're saying, Joshua, uh, this could be a deciding factor uh, for buying a multi-platform game on their system. Mm-hmm. That's another... That's a great point, actually. Yeah, yeah. Especially exclusive content, exclusive DLC. Yeah. I mean, with the, with, with Sony games, what do you have? 50 trophies minimum? Sometimes more? Usually it's a pretty decent amount. So let, let's say, let's say you have 50. Let's say you have 50. You know, you have a guaranteed one platinum if you get them all. Let's say the other 30 are silver and the bronze don't matter. Those are 10 left or 20 left. So you got a chance to make 30 cents plus the platinum or so. Or if there's 10 gold, let's say. You got a chance to make four dollars on that game if you beat the whole game. Yep. Do you think people will really care that much? Like, would, would that influence you? Like, I can if I if I bust my hump and get every single achievement or trophy in this game, I can make back four dollars. I I don't think so. But if you're that close and you have like one or two things away, then you might in- incentivize yourself to do that. Uh, okay. Personally, no, uh, it's not going to affect me too much. But uh, for completionists, people who were going to do this anyway. Who who kind of thrive on completely just demolishing a game? Guilty. Now you get some money out of it. All right, so that's definitely true. That might influence those people. But what percentage of the gaming culture is that? Is are are completionists of that caliber? Uh, about as many platinum trophies as I have. Right. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's probably less than five percent because Way less. on the average, maybe even two percent. Two percent because on the average game, you can actually see the percentage of players that have achieved that which I think is a cool feature to have. You can see how many of all the people that have played this game and it's uploaded to the PlayStation Network. You can see what percentage has. <coughs> Microsoft did it first. Got this trophy. <laughs> Excuse me. Not necessarily, all right, so, though. So fin- final thoughts. How do you guys like this? Do you think it's going to be influential? And uh, does, this, does this mean anything to you? For me, um, I think it's cool uh, overall. I don't. It's still a head-scratcher. I don't think it's going to be very influential. I don't think people are going to go, oh, man, I can make $5. But I think it will help them in that slight little nudge because they already have the edge over Microsoft in this console generation. Uh, it doesn't affect me too much at all. I hardly ever turn on my PlayStation. I will probably continue to hardly ever turn on my PlayStation. Uh, but they honestly didn't have to give you anything at all. So this is just kind of, I mean, is it a lot that they're giving you? No, but it's something that they didn't have to. I don't think this is going to be a big deal. I think it's a nice little perk to have in addition. I don't think it's going to fare where people are super excited to do this. And on a side note, I finally was able to log in. I have 20 platinum trophies. There you go. 372 silver, 124 gold, 1,800 in total. It says 96 games, but most of these are games I never played or downloaded. Because you got you have all the free stuff from PlayStation Plus that they equivocate on there. Equivalate. So... I mean, and none of that matters. Yeah, I mean, nope. even even if it did, nope, nope. That's that's what five years of having a play six years having a PlayStation Network account, and you've got twenty bucks back across all the games you played. I wish I can have that twenty I bucks. Mean, this kind of seems like something they should have started with a new ge- uh, console generation. I, I think just adding on to that would just kind of add a little more because I mean, people aren't going to start over. Yeah, I can de- definitely see that. All right, guys, well, let us know what you thought or what you think of this uh, new kind of Sony playstation program do you like it will influence anything about how you uh you buy your product on gaming and uh are you looking to make some extra cash or do you just not care uh reach out to us on contact at scspodcast.net or you can uh, reach us uh, on twitter at super co-op squad 
All right, guys, it's time for fan favorites. So every week we pick 10 rapid fire questions and each of us answers to find where we stand to pose and where we stand united in fandom. So play along. And this time, like the last three or four times, you really can play along. Just go to uh, uh, just go to our show notes. You'll be able to find the link there that says uh, fan favorites episode 57. That's going to be uh, for the next week's episode. You'll be able to click that right now. Take the uh, the poll for next week's episode. That way, when you're listening next week, you'll be able to know that you had an influence on the vote that we're talking about. So click that link and you'll be able to do that. There'll be a link in there as well. And that's shown in the uh, description at the little at the bottom for you. If you want to take this week's. But of course, you won't have any influence on what we're talking about right now. So go ahead and do that, guys. Let us know what your fan favorites are. All right. So I had the pick. So, so Johnny, this this is the first of your homework. Shut up, because you had all the homework. I did. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just know that you you have the possibility of doing that too. This is this is true. And I'm if that's the it. case, it's this a vicious cycle <laughs> until someone breaks it. All right. So well, I had I had the homework, and um, I had you know we've done a lot. We've had a lot of different things going on with where we've taken fan favorites, and it used to be very simple. So there, there's a game that some people like to play um, called Mary uh, Mary Bang and Murder, essentially. You know, yeah, okay, yeah. You, you gotta we'll pick that. you gotta pick three it's and you a gotta PG version. Yeah. So this is this is just marry or murder. So you know, okay. you're on you're on you're you be on, however you want. You can you can have you can be on a game show, you know, uh The Bachelor, you got last two contestants, and one you gotta slip that ring to, and the other one you gotta give a shotgun blast to. So Damn. The one you pick is the one you marry. The one you don't pick is the one that you murder. Oh, this one got violent. Yep. Black Bachelor got violent. Yeah, Bachelor. They got to keep them rating ups, man. <laughs> <laughs> the only way they can get get to this audience nowadays. So go ahead and uh, pick the one you would marry. So first up, and I tried to make these hurt for both of you. Really did. First up, Bayonetta or Zelda? And I'm picking the one I, I'll marry. You marry. Sorry, girl. Bayo. I thought that was going to be easy for you. Zelda. Zelda. Samus or Lucina? That, yeah, that hurts Gary more than hurts me. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Lu- Lucina knew it. Samus, Samus, Bastard. Princess Peach or Rosalina? Rosalina, Rose, bleh, Rosalina, Princess Peach. Mm-hmm. A little bias there. Cammy or Catwoman? Oh, Catwoman. Cammy, Catwoman. Mm. Tifa Lockhart or Lara Croft? Ah, Tifa, Tifa, Lara. Mm. Ryu or Ken? Ryu. Ryu. Mm, no, Ken. I changed. I changed to Ken. <laughs> no backsies. So I, I got Ryu. We'll give him Ken. We'll give him Ken. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go with Ken. Donkey Kong or Ganondorf? Huh. <laughs> Both these characters you play. Ganondorf. Ganondorf. Donkey Kong. Can I ask a question? Is it old Ganondorf or like Ocarina what, of like Time? Like big Ganondorf? Like Ganondorf. the most, Demon King No, like, like, Gan- like Super Smash Brothers. Melee or Brawl? Jeez. Or, it's it's <laughs> the same. <laughs> Eric Cartman or Stewie Griffin? Uh, okay. Um, Stewie? S- question mark? <laughs> Stewie. Stewie. Professor Farnsworth or Mr. Burns? Not No money involved, just the person. Uh, Farnsworth. 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 Batman or Superman? Huh. Batman. Batman. Superman. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, that is that is it, guys. Let's go ahead and break these down. All right. So first, uh, we had Bayo or Zelda. This is a tough one. Uh, we all know you like the dungeon, right? <laughs> you don't. I, I you won don't, that fight. You marry the good girl. Yes, the bad girl, the bad boy. They could be exciting, I mean, but those are the ones that break your heart. She's not necessarily bad. I mean, she's she like bad. she's the pretty. She's, she's pretty bad, bad dude. She's bad. She's badass. In her game, she's literally fighting mean, angels. It, maybe the angels did something bad. They're angels. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> same thing happened in was Dark Siders. Yeah. In Dark Siders. The character you play is kind of a bad guy. He's one of the four horsemen, but he's fighting the angels because the angels are trying to start the apocalypse because they got the order that the apocalypse... It's long story, but but the angels were on the wrong side in that game. I guess it depends on how you look at it. The apocalypse is a necessary part of, you know, what has to happen, I mean, biblically. Yeah, but it wasn't time. All right. Either way, (laughs) she's definitely... In comparison to Zelda, whether or not you think okay, Bale is well, yeah, not good or bad, she's the bad one. one. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Zelda by far. Yeah. So uh, listeners chose uh, Zelda 66% uh, to 33% for Bea. So, pakao, pakao. Take that, Bale. Oh. Bale's more like 
I feel like she's more of a hit it and quit it. Than well, I, she's she's nothing now because she's dead. So damn. She's dead. All right. Samus or Lucina? Who's Easy. A, Samus. Jerk. Samus. She's so flexible. She's what? very <laughs> flexible. Yes, she is. But, I mean, Lucina. I just, I, I like space better than, you know, like fantasy. Like, you know, high fantasy. So, Samus is a sp- I mean, she's got her own shit. That, that's fair. But swords, swords are, are, are pretty good. Pretty cool. When she says, I'm going to take you to my place, that's her ship. Uh, or the Chozos. She's going to take you to the Chozos. Mm. No. No, we're not we're not getting that far. So seventy seven percent chose Samus, twenty two percent chose Lucina. So cut off Lucina's head with the, her own sword, she's dead. Damn. Damn. Cut it with your hand. <laughs> Princess Peach or Rosalina? Rosalina. Rosalina. Princess I mean, Peach doesn't have a chance. Princess Peach is just nice and she's smart. She's too nice. She's sweet. She keeps like, getting kidnapped. And that that that's a testament to how much everybody loves her. She's just too nice. She can't stand up to Buzz. I feel like she's the girl that just can't make the decisions. Like, what do you want to eat? I don't know. Whatever you want. I don't think that's her at all. I think she's like, you know, I'll cook tonight, babe. What do you want to eat? I'll, don't, I'll cook your favorite meal. Like, that's how she is. She can cook, but I she mean, ain't making decisions. Bowser, Bowser's trying to steal her. Mario's chasing after her. The woman is... Everybody loves Peach. Half the time, she's not even struggling. <laughs> She's captured and she's just like Mario. Mario. She's not fighting back. She's just she's just standing there. She could have ran ran away. Yeah. No one's right there guarding her. I mean PTSD, man. Like she's scared. All right. Well, sixty six percent of our listeners chose uh good old Princess Peach and uh Rosalina. We stabbed her with her own Luma. So she stabbed her with a Luma. She's dead. She's Peach dead. has a frying pan. She ain't scared. So Cammy or Catwoman? Yo. Cammy's like my waifu. Uh, you know, that's fine and all. I respect your decision, but She's it's wrong. <laughs> no, there, there, there is no wrong. I, I have to agree with Garrett here. Cammy mm. is a psycho. Like, literally, she's been influenced by psycho power to where she's crazy. She's not a psycho. She's mind controlled. Psycho power from M. Bison has influenced her to the point where her mind is kind of broken. That doesn't mean she's psycho. I'm just saying that's not who I want to marry, bruh. Everyone's got dark past, man. Everyone's got skeletons. That's true, and I don't have Catwoman, to be Catwoman. She's a thief, bro. But I don't have to. I don't have to worry about waking. She's a, she's a thief. I don't have to wake up. Worry about waking up in the middle of the night with you know a knife in my rib cage. That's not gonna happen. That's the past, man. The only it's thing Selena Kyle stole from me was my heart. Mm, boo! <laughs> so sixty six percent of our listeners chose Catwoman. Thirty three percent chose Cammy. So yeah, Gyro Drive. We're we're gonna go ahead and uh, and throw her off a cliff or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Selena's gonna take your house. She's gonna take half. She's gonna take half. <laughs> All right, Tifa or Lara Croft. Mm. It's a tough one, but Tifa's a badass. They practically have the same type of outfit, just kind of short up skirt, short shorts. That's not over- that's overalls. Real. Suspenders. Yeah. No, I picked Tifa. I'm just saying they wear a similar type of clothing. Yeah, but Lara's just cooler. Mm, Tifa, cool. Tifa is bare fist, bare knuckle fighting. She's a survivor too. Mm-hmm, she Lara. is a survivor. She's also sadly, you know, n- she's not even she's not even the rebound girl. Like Cloud doesn't want her. Like, yeah, no. Nobody was a rebound girl for Cloud. Yeah, but she tried to be. Like that shows a lot of a lot of low self esteem. That when his girl died, she tried to sizzle her way up in, in there and still got rejected. So. I mean, my man Cloud was going through some tough times. Give it time. Let yeah, it simmer. My, my point is not the fact that she got rejected, but that the man's girl died and she tried to like slide. Like two minutes later. Right. Tried to slide herself all Try up in there. Slide those DMs. <laughs> got blocked. So, so, so you're single now, huh? <laughs> so you're free Saturday then, huh? <laughs> what are your plans looking like? I got some material at the house if you want to come by. <laughs> Dude had issues. He wasn't even a real person. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, no. For me anyway. And, uh, yeah, Lara Croft won 66% to 33% for Tifa. So we'll go ahead and arch back and pop, 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 put a few arrows in Tifa there. All right, well, we just stab her in the back with a no, really, no, really mean, long sword. La- Lara Croft. We'll just come from the rafters, just in slow motion. We, I mean, we could, but, you know, Lara uses bow and arrow. Make sure you eat her own material. Oh, oh, oh the other person kills. The, I just thought the other I one know, I mean, died. this time, that's There's, what I'm doing this time. Oh, okay. There's okay. no order. I mean, right. marry first, kill first, whatever you want, Garrett. So this one's interesting here. So Ryu or Ken Masters? Yo, have you seen sexy Ryu in that beard, dude? I mean, I yeah. Have. I have. But the dude will never be home. He's exactly. always out. Exactly. <laughs> he will always be out. He'll never be home. He I, never. 
He's can't, always I can't support me. <laughs> he's out walking the streets. He's, he's all, making money, dude. All he's, hours of the night, no shoes. He's getting paid. You don't he, need shoes. Can't wear shoes. He'll he never has his cell phone on him. Don't know where he's at. But Ken, the money, <laughs> the money, he's rich. Yo, have you Filthy seen rich have you seen Street Fighter Five? Ken's face. I mean, at least I know Banana Ken. Hair. At least I know Ken's coming home. Reeves coming, coming home. home. Yeah, he's coming home. He's coming home. The world is his home. After he's done training, he's coming home. All right, I know that Ken. You know, he's a good father. All right, he's got. Uh, I don't, don't leave your don't wife and that, baby behind. I don't think that baby's been born yet. Actually, that baby's I, th- been I think born. Elizabeth is still. No, that baby's been born since Street Fighter Four. Okay, okay. There you go. He's dependable. Yeah, all I know is I could trust and Ken. money. <laughs> I can trust Ken. <laughs> uh, so fifty-five percent of uh, listeners chose Ryu. Forty-four percent chose Ken. So Hadou can just burn Ken's face off. Oh, well, Metsu Hadou Ken. You know Ryu just takes him down. I'm there. sure you can uppercut, knock that head off. We got Donkey Kong or Ganondorf. This was Chandler. I sent Chandler the the link, and he was like, "Uh, okay." <laughs> he <laughs> was right. like weirded out by this. All right, what are you two thinking? Did you pick Donkey Kong? Yeah, he yes. picked Donkey Kong. You know why he picked Donkey Kong, right? No, oh tell my me, God. tell me, you know why Here he picked Donkey Kong? Because he can't stop thinking about King Kong's <laughs> giant schlong. <laughs> All right, no. <laughs> Ganondorf is an evil, evil man. You think you're gonna have a? You're gonna be one of the most abused spouses in history. Nah, he's just gonna leave me alone. No, no, he won't. How do you know? Did he leave anyone alone in any of his games? He left no one. He left the princess alone. I, all up in that castle, all by herself. He imprisoned her. Yeah, but she. By, he ain't bothering her. He ain't bothering. He's so he's too busy taking over the world. He's leaving me alone. I do my own thing. And once that world's taken over. He's coming for you. No, nah, it's just us. It's just us, baby. I think that you are expecting a lot from a man that you should expect very little from. He her. is a king. Yeah, I ain't trying to. I ain't on that bestiality stuff, man. I'm, I'm just saying, at least Donkey's got a good heart, man. I mean, does he? I mean, he <laughs> he, he also stole what Jumpman's girl. Yep. That was a technically. That's, 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 that's not true. even the same Donkey Kong. You know that, right? Like that's not the same person. No, that's like Grand that's Cranky Kong. Kong. That's right. That's right. That's so right. yeah. Oh, fair enough. All right, he came from a bad family. <laughs> I can't trust that. You, you're just all about that banana whore. That's, that's you gold digger. You I banana just, digger. <laughs> I ain't saying you a banana digger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, listeners, seventy seven percent chose DK and twenty two percent chose Gannon. So he's the leader of the group. Yeah, you know him and, well. And this marriage. <laughs> <laughs> wow and uh yeah ganon just gets monkey slapped to death so goodbye ganon Next no, could, got, you could do that grab just, and smash bros it grabs and just backhands just them, throw just back them off, off nah, screen ganon there gets go. the clap and dies <laughs> so we got Gar- uh eric cartman or uh stewie griffin mm, i can deal with stewie a- a- again mm. eric cartman is is a sadistic psychopathic killer i mean they both are yeah Okay, but Stewie has kind of somewhat reformed himself yes. over the years. If he likes you, it's good. If he doesn't yeah. like you, beware. All I know is any 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 little thing might set Cartman off to murder you. I kind of know where I stand with Stewie on most things. So this he Cartman- wanted a Mega Ranger. He got goddamn hands in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> is Cartman really trying to kill you? Half the time he's just talking the talk, though. No, man, N- he. Joshua, <laughs> please enlighten have, him. Have I missed a lot of episodes? He fed a child his parents in Chile. Oh, well, there's two people. <laughs> How many people has Stewie killed? You should, you should personally hate Cartman. He tried to eradicate all. Shut, gen- shut, 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 shut oh, your mouth! Shut, shut oh, your mouth! Oh, you want to hear about that? We don't, we don't speak that. Nah, <laughs> I don't need anyone emailing us in. Revolt, revolt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we got. Uh, He's Eric- dead to me. Eric Cartman lost this one. As he should have. Yeah, right? Uh, 77% of listeners chose Stewie Griffin. 22% decided a cruel, they want to have a terrible marriage uh, to Eric Cartman. So 77% need counseling for marrying a baby. (laughs) Let's just assume he's an adult. So we'll go ahead and laser Eric Cartman in the face and he's No, we just chop him up and put him in someone's oatmeal. Professor Farnsworth or Mr. Burns? All right. So so no money was involved with this one. Right. Uh, but the mind on Professor Farnsworth, the science, it's good. I mean, you got a 50-50 chance of him not obliterating you with his own wacky science. But I, I did also choose Farnsworth. Burns has just got that creepy smile. And- I mean, any man that's going to try and steal candy from a baby, I don't know, man. I mean, that's just called opportunity. <laughs> that man takes opportunity. 
That's called just playing your cards when you see them. <laughs> Can't be mad at him for that. <laughs> so we got a uh, 56% of our listeners chose Farnsworth to 44% choosing Burns. And last, Batman or Superman? Batman. I mean, Batman will protect you unless your name's Jason Todd. See, yeah. The only thing with Batman, though, he might protect you. He might never harm you, but he doesn't really care about you. That's at least. Not- that's not true. Really? It's it I mean, think about this. In all in every iteration of Batman where they show the future, he's alone, his family leaves him, they hate him, he's pushed them away. He's 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 alone because he can't keep a relationship with people who love him because he doesn't know how to express love back. That's that is fair. I don't think that necessarily means he doesn't care. I don't think he just can show it. That's a form of caring. If you don't know how to show love, that means it's that's a part of caring. You got to learn how to express it. And if you don't know how, you got to take those steps to do it. And yeah, Superman, that. that's my point. And Superman, man, he'll be there. He'll he will be there. literally reverse the rotation of the earth I, and bring you back. I, that That's a Superman that I can get down with there. Man, you're responsible for Garrett's divorce to Batman now. I mean, you know what? It's better to do it now <laughs> than to wait. <laughs> you're, you're the one that's going to be at the wedding, but like, I object. Probably, yes. Especially because oh, he's buddy. he's you know marrying a man that's wearing a mask at the altar, so there's that too. Garrett. So overwhelmingly, <laughs> uh, our our listeners chose Batman, eighty nine percent to eleven uh, percent for uh, for Superman. Hey, look, you got your Pac Man. I did get my Pac Man. I always like that. Wanka wanka wanka. All right, guys. Well, that is fan favorites. Hopefully, you enjoyed our little discussion on that. Give us some themes for next week. Email us uh, contact at scspodcast.net or reach out to us on Twitter. Give us some themes that we can use for next week's fan favorites. And don't forget to uh, go ahead and click on that link in the show notes or click on that link in the summary of the episode you're listening to and take next week's poll, guys. Do it right now. Do it. All right, so EA has purchased Titanfall developer Respawn Studios for an estimated total of about $455 million. This is, again, depending on a certain royalty, certain taxes, additional negotiations. But it for sure is going to be upwards of three hundred million, most likely in the four hundreds. Um, this is unprecedented. This is something. I, this is something I don't think anyone saw coming in the gaming industry, and uh, it's one giant publisher and developer taking on taking you know an, one of the best independent first person shooter developers on the marketing and adding them to their stable. Um, so you know, first of all, did you see this coming? Was this a shock? And what does EA have to gain from this? I did not see this coming. This is shocking. Um, what does EA have to gain? I mean, uh, if you look at the history of of EA though, and and other studios, it's not very good. Like they end up, you know, taking what they need, you know, uh, releasing a couple of games, and then they end up just shutting down the studio. So I'm actually pretty kind of uh, scared for Respawn. Okay. I don't think anybody saw this coming. I think it's I think it's a big deal. That is a pretty interesting point, Garrett. But what I think could be a reason is we see a bunch of development studios getting shut down, independent or not. So maybe this is their kind of, you know, was it se- security, secure blanket? What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, security blanket. Job security. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, all of those. So that maybe this is a way where, hey, we get this big company to buy us out, that we have more funds, we can be a little bit more creative in some projects we want to do because now we have the backing. Exactly the opposite, sir. It, it could go either way. Hopefully. But, I uh, but. I respectfully agree with Garrett here and disagree with you. They don't gain creativity by having you know a corporate overhead. It doesn't matter what company it is, whether it was Bethesda who owned them or Zenimax or EA or Activision, by having someone – own your company and call the shots you are losing your create your creative independence yeah i I, mean we can look back and see how many games suffered because big uh companies said oh we want this in it we want this to be a shooter because shooters are the big thing now uh you know then you know dead space comes out with a third person shooter what what i what i see is two possibilities the first one i think joshua you hit pretty pretty heavily it could be that maybe Respawn was having some cash flow issues. They didn't have the money they needed to stay open, and then maybe they were going to close. I think that's a long shot because Titanfall's doing doing well. I mean, it's no it's no Call of Duty. It's not going to be on the top of the charts, you know, for six months. But when it does come out, it it, it sells well. It's in the top ten for a couple of months. It's making its money. Um, but it's a possibility. The second thing I think is that I think that 
I just it was an overwhelming amount of money to where the studio heads for respawn just were like what else can we do like we've got these people who work for us who i'm sure many of the people that have been there for many years are going to get a nice payout you know the people you know the tip top and maybe a little bit down in the you know the executive side who who could say no like yeah, it's damn. a lot of money yeah that's that's what i see as two possibilities yeah if you get over a quarter of a billion dollars handed to you half a billion <laughs> that's well, damn possibly half, half a billion yeah. yeah i mean i mean it, it would no matter how much creative independence i would want in anything making this podcast a movie whatever if someone says i'm in the world (laughs) right you're right (laughs) if someone says johnny i know you like what you're doing and you you built yourself from the ground up for the last eight years but i'm going to give you and all of your employees 500 billion 500 million dollars johnny sell it yeah sell it we don't need it yeah i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna sign man i'm gonna sign (laughs) i'm gonna sign you want to take my name for 10 grand yeah, I sign the paper. I, and I don't know very many people who would not have signed. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, you you got to be real with it. Uh, as much as we want to, you know, it's a perfect world where, you know, we take ideal uh, ideals over just honestly cold hard cash. Right. One of these is going to, you know, feed me. Right, exactly. And it's not going to be my ideals. Right. And and then I mean, hopefully they were looking at all their employees getting fed too cuz yeah. they're going to get some a, a good amount of them are going to get some money out of this. Yeah. Um, now the other thing that I think is, is worth bringing up, and this isn't even my idea, this is something that I was reading just through internet boards and on different websites and such, is that a lot of people, and I did realize this, they didn't put it two and two together, but Vince Ampella, uh, he was the, one of the co-founders of Respawn Studios. He broke away, uh, from Activision mm-hmm. and he was, he was one of the heads of, of, uh, Call of Duty up until like Modern Warfare 2. Uh, big point people were making in this is that, a lot of the people who also left with him from Activision were the people that made Call of Duty great. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 and 2 were by far the highest and most critically acclaimed. Now EA the, pr- pretty much has all of those people brought into their fold that they can probably use, of course, on Titanfall, but also on Battlefield. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront, a way to have them combat against Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Or even a brand new IP. Yeah. So that's a possibility as well. Yeah. And I think with EA, you get more marketing out of it. EA pumps a lot of marketing in their sports titles and they can, I mean, how much Battlefront stuff have you seen in the last few weeks? Yeah. So (laughs) you pump out a Titanfall game or any other type of IP or franchise and you will get that exposure as long as EA wants to put it out there. That's actually a really good point considering Titanfall 2 got almost zero to no marketing. Yeah. And it got, it was pretty you know, pretty well received. It just didn't get that critical acclaim because it came out in between Call of Duty and, and Battlefield, Battlefield and whatever other titles came out literally at that same it's a time. Bad place to be in. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good point from both of you. I mean, yeah, t- last was it last year? Two years ago, Titanfall Two came out and people loved it. People considered it a better shooter than Battlefield, than than uh, ba- Battlefront the year before, yeah. than Call of Duty. Like, but it it just didn't get any marketing. It yeah. didn't get the hype that you need in gaming nowadays. Yeah, especially for shooters. Like, you need high numbers because yeah. that's the most. I think that's the most casually uh, appealing genre. So you need people to know about it. Yeah, and one thing that really stood out for that game is it first was multiplayer only, critically uh, claimed and received. Second game really builds upon the multiplayer, makes it better, and gives you a really good campaign in addition. Regardless if you're going to play it or not, they put the time and the effort to make a campaign for those casual players that don't play online. It, uh, as we just said, it just didn't get the exposure and it just tanked. Yeah, last point I have before we move on to another question. Um, when you look at this from EA standpoint, Respawn Studios is a studio that's been out, what, less than 10 years they've been, they've been a studio. Right they broke there. away. They created their own studio, their own, their own hierarchy, their own system, their own code. And then they made two kick-ass games that are, you know, up there rivaling yeah. Call of Duty and Battlefield and their own, you know, their own game and Battlefront. These are dudes that you want on your team. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's huge. Pick them up. That's why EA's paying a lot of money. <laughs> a ton of money. Uh, so what, you know, last thing before we move on, what is the first thing EA does with Respawn? Hmm. Well, we already know that they're working or going to be working on Titanfall 3. So that's, that's already a given. They've already announced that. But I, I think besides that, they put them on a project that is either currently being work, worked on or they give them a new IP. Like we closed down Visceral. 
that Star Wars game is going to get revamped. And do you put some of these guys on whatever their new Star Wars game is? Do you put them on Anthem, which is going to come out down the line uh, with Bioware? Or do you make a, something new? And I think they should make something new. They, they hit it right the first time. I think they can come up with something again. Yeah, I, I definitely see, uh, obviously, Titanfall 3. Uh, I think them having a brand new IP. Don't know, you know, what it could possibly be about. But, you know, you, you get these guys that make these, you know, phenomenal shooters. You you give them you know the money and the means they they can really really get something out of there. Also, I think maybe asking uh, or putting a couple of them on like Battlefield Battlefront, kind of getting their input on it. Okay, I I kind of in that in that vein as you talked about that last point. I think that they put. I mean, of course, again, it's obvious they're going to continue to make Titanfall. That's going to happen. But they are going to tap a lot of these guys and they're going to move them onto other projects, Battlefield and Battlefront in particular. They EA doesn't like playing second fiddle. They don't. And they've been getting their butts handed to them for the past decade. And every chance they have to be Call of Duty, they failed. And I think that they want that top spot. You think they'll bring bad company back? No. <laughs> you think, you think <laughs> that's dead in the they're, water? Yeah, they're, they're not going to bring it back. Now, uh, do you think Star Wars Battlefront 2 will sell more than Call of Duty World War 2, whatever? No. Absolutely not. Nope. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we'll see in about two weeks here. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. Is that game not officially out yet, or are they still in the uh, the that, early like release? It won't come out until I think which, Tuesday. Which game? Battlefront. Uh, Battlefront. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's Battlefront. Not, I think is either uh, Tuesday coming up or the Tuesday after. Yeah. So it's coming, but it's not here yet as of the as of recording right now. All right, well, that's what we got on EA purchasing Titanfall uh, and Respawn Studios. Let us know what you guys think. Email us, contact at scspodcast.net, or reach out to us on Twitter, guys. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you think. Uh, is this important, or does, does not does not change much for EA? Are they still, still the same scumbags they used to be? All right, guys, it's time for Gamer Trivia. So every week, two of us go head-to-head in a best-of-five trivia contest. Garrett's over there just... He's nervous. Garrett's nervous. I don't want all the homework. <laughs> it's a trivia contest. So uh, the winner, they stay and play next week, and that's why Garrett's uh, scared. He wants to stay <laughs> and play next week. He doesn't want to have to do the homework. doesn't want to have the shame of, of losing in front of you know everybody listening. And uh, the winner, you know, you get the bragging rights. You get you get to go home happy. You get to smile at the other person, them <laughs> hating your smile, <laughs> wishing they could poke your eye, just make you cry a little bit. It's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. <laughs> So not play the eye-poking part. Yeah, not that. Not that. So play along, guys. Let's see how much uh, knowledge you have in gamer trivia. So I went down last week. It wasn't fun. Like I said, you know, it, it feels bad. But uh, it was my job. My job to uh, do trivia. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's getting, I don't want to say harder, but I want to keep it kind of fair. You know, I always want to try to make it fair. Yeah, something that we both are mm. equally knowledgeable about. Right. Or not knowledgeable about. And then it comes out with... Left field, Rugrats trivia. Oh, I got that, that one. You you guys could both do well oh. in Rugrats trivia. Oh, I got that one. It's been so long. <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, Legend of Zelda trivia. Oh, specifically, Breath of the Wild, a he's game both of back. you guys played and beat. This it's a game gonna, both of you guys played gonna and gonna beat. Do trivia on a game he's, dude's going to be giving us trivia on a game he's never touched. <laughs> That's I, well, I, mean, I don't need I don't need to know the game to give you trivia. It's got to look right, up stuff. Congratulations, Joshua. Do you believe everything you see on the internet? Yo, you giving up, right? You remember having the last two times Johnny gave up like that? He won. I'm still going to play, but I, 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 don't, I don't know about this, game. Confidence is not very I don't high. like this uh, this trickery you're doing. This reverse trickery. psychology thing you're doing. No. I don't like it. Odds are not in my favor. I'm getting put out into the games. Just play. All right, here we go. Question one. In the original game, Spectacle Rock is found on Death Mountain. In the new game, it is located in A, the Great Plateau, B, Tao Tao Mountain Ridge, C, the Forest of Time, or D, the Gerudo region. Like I said, dude's never played the game before. <laughs> I have Joshua's answer, and I have Garrett's answer. Random ass question. <laughs> Garrett, you chose D, uh-huh. Gerudo region. Joshua, you chose B, Tao Tao Mountain Ridge. The correct answer is D. The Gerudo region. See, this is what I'm talking about, Garrett. You need to just shut your mouth, play the game. You'll so be fine. that is correct for you, Garrett. <laughs> and that is incorrect for you, Joshua. All right. Score is one for Garrett, zero for Joshua. Rubbing it in. <laughs> question, uh, question two. 
In Breath of the Wild, Link is mostly free to go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants in any order, including defeating the main boss immediately. However, if Link so chooses to do so, uh, which of the following other tasks is absolutely mandatory that be completed first? Is it A, defeating uh, the divine beast Valmado? Is it B, collecting 100 Korok seeds? Is it C, visiting Robbie at Akala Ancient Tech Lab? Or is it D, clearing the four shrines in the Great Plateau? Garrett, you've answered D. Joshua, you've answered D. If this is wrong, it's because we have people breaking the game. <laughs> The correct answer is D. So, uh, yes, that's correct for both of you. Good job, gentlemen. I have no facts about this because I literally just looked up information and mm-hmm. made, tri- play the game. made trivia because yeah. yeah, I have no, not played this game. We already made that known. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, two for uh, you, Garrett, and one for you, Joshua. Correct for both. All right. So question three. What must Link do to be able to enter Gerudo Town? A. Defeat Divine Beast Van Oberis. B. Dress like a woman. C, pay an entrance fee of two diamonds. Or D, ride a sand seal through the town gates. I have Joshua's answer. I have Garrett's answer. You guys have cho- both chosen B. The correct answer is B. So that is correct for you, Garrett. Correct for you, Joshua. Score is three to two. Garrett's lead. Mm. All right. Here we go. Question four. Which of the following locations from past Zelda games cannot be visited in Breath of the Wild? Is it A, the Forsaken Fortress? Is it B, Temple of Time? Is it C, Lon Lon Ranch? Or is it D, Arbiter's Grounds? Hmm, y'all ain't so cocky now. See, I'll give it. This is a good question, but I don't give you any credit, Johnny. Wow, what a jerk. (laughs) All right, I have both your answers. Garrett. You chose D, Joshua. You chose B. The correct answer is A, the Forsaken Fortress. That is incorrect for both of you. You know what D is? Nope, no clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Score stays three to two. Last question. Question five. What is a bloopy? <laughs> is it A, a rabbit-like creature that drops rupees? Is it B, a blue rupee? <laughs> is it C, an enemy that can use swords? Or is it D, a sword that shoots lightning bolts? Have Joshua's answer extremely quickly. It's because I know what it is. I have Garrett's answer relatively quickly. Tie it up, Garrett. Tie it up. That means get it wrong. I got to see your answers here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Garrett, you chose A. Damn it. <laughs> Joshua, <laughs> you chose A. The correct answer is A. Got that there, uh, spirit bunny? Yeah. A rabbit like creature that drops rupees. He's like, a blue rupee. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> right? So that is uh, correct for both of you. All right. So that's Garrett leading four to Joshua's three. All right. Salty, sudden mm. death question. We haven't done this in true fashion in a while. You need to bet. However many points you have, or you uh, you can bet as many points as you have, or as little as you'd like. However many points you bet, if you get this question correct, you gain that many points. You get it wrong, you lose that many points. I have Garrett's bet, and I have Joshua's bet. All right, here we go. Here's the question. Master Koga is the leader of which group of people who defected to the dark side once the calamity struck? Which group does he lead? I feel like I'm barely off. I have Garrett's answer. I've had not yet. My, I, I feel like I'm like a letter off. Some, some very tight misspelling. Joshua, you said the Kaiga clan. Garrett, you said it was the Yuga clan. Yeah, see? So I was off by like one or two. The correct answer is the Yaiga clan. The Yaiga clan. So that is incorrect. We're both like in the middle there. I, I knew it both. was off by like one letter. I was also off by one. I was letter. like Kiga, Kiga. So now for the points. See, we both knew what it was. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. It's only stupid if you lose. Joshua had three points. You bet three points. I bet it all. Leaves you with zero points. Garrett, you lucked out. You Whoa. had four points. You bet two. You got two points left. 
that leaves you the uh, the winner and the champion for this week's gamer trivia. Hey, that was close. All right. Well, congrats to you, man. And hopefully uh, you out there did well on the trivia. Um, yeah. If you didn't, then I guess you can feel salt like Joshua because he's feeling rather salty right now. Nah. Congratulations, there's no salt. Joshua. You got, you got this one. Yeah. No, no homework for Garrett on this one. All right. Well, moving on. All right. So a new Star Wars trilogy has been announced uh, by Disney. Uh, this is going to be a, a series that's this is going to con- this is going to continue the series in a new direction that's supposed to take place far outside of the Skywalker uh, kind of uh, what would you call it saga? Yeah, there we go, Skywalker saga, um, which is a first for for Star Wars. It's, it's never done this before in in the movie format. Yeah, um, Ryan Johnson, the director of uh, Last Jedi, is supposed to be helming this new trilogy. Uh, so, thoughts on this, guys? What do you think? Uh, we can finally see. How Disney's, <clears throat> we can finally see how Disney's going to expand the universe. I mean, they got rid of a lot of the stuff. Uh, when Disney purchased Star Wars, they got rid of a lot of the extended universe and everything. So now we can see what they're going to add and what they want in it. I'm indifferent. Uh, I'm not excited, nor am I not excited. I mean, it's cool that they're branch, they're finally branching out to new territory. But at the same time, I feel they don't really need any more Star Wars stories. Yeah, I, I think they've got to be very careful with oversaturation of Star Wars films. I mean, we're already getting this new trilogy kind of in the middle of that. They have the Han Solo film. They have the the sort of in limbo possible uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi film that's supposed to be coming, right? Like, they've got a bunch of stuff. You don't think he means old Ben Kenobi? You know, old Ben? <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, they got a lot going and I feel like, you know, yes, I want you to do more stuff. I want you to, this is what I want. This is what I want, where I want you to go. I don't want to know more about previous characters. I don't want to see young Obi-Wan. I don't want to see young Han Solo. I want you to tell new, fresh stories, but slow down a little bit. Like, just slow down. Uh, so I want to get there, but I want to get there alive. <laughs> get there in my own pace. Are you saying, uh, they should maybe take a page out of the Assassin's Creed book and take a year off? Here's not Maybe, enough. well, I'm using that as an example. Oh, okay. But take some time off before another uh, Star Wars, I guess, installment. I just I just don't know if it's healthy for the franchise to be a yearly thing where you just expect a Star Wars movie every year. I don't know if that's a good thing for the franchise. Because that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. But they're kind of taking the Call of Duty approach to it where it's a different uh, studio or storyline you know, uh, alternating. So, I mean, it is working for Call of Duty. It's, you know, declining as the time goes on, but it's still, they're still making money. But is that what you want from, you want to say about Star Wars? You want to say that you just input Star Wars in that? Yeah, it's, it, I mean, they're still making money. It's declining, but they're still doing well. Like, I don't want to have that be Star Wars' legacy. No, no I, I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, they kind of don't have a need to change it. People but, are going to get it. People are going to see it. People are going to buy the movie when it comes out. People are going to, you know, take repeated trips to the theaters. At some point, people will stop doing that. If 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 the mysticism of Star Wars fades away because you just put out movie after movie, there won't be that desire to go watch them a bunch of times or to really care or like, oh, oh God, it's a Star Wars film because you get one every year. I yeah, can agree that's with that. That's fair. And I, I'm, I'm afraid of that. Um, on the flip side, though, on the flip side... I'm really excited to see something new and fresh. Yeah. Like galaxy far, far away. I wonder if they're going to take brand new content, like 100% new, or if they're going to leech on some type of lore. Like if you played the Old Republic on PC, that spans way, was it, is it before or way after? It's a thousand years before. Yeah. So it's a decent amount of time. So are we, are we pulling from that direction? Are we just, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I think the best thing to do would be to use some some form of of content that's already been explored in the the previous canon, the extended universe. That's probably the best option. They have a lot to pull from. Yeah, they got the archives just chilling there. We're so gonna find out in the next movie or the, so. The thing that I think about is, as far as in the movie format, at the very least, and even to some degree in the extended universe, they've never they've never moved outside of the Skywalker saga. There's there's no Star Wars film that doesn't surround that or or penetrate that ah, there, there you got it <laughs> um it always takes place around it 
So if this is the first, I, I wonder how Star Wars will, will do if it's not based upon that sort of thing. I want to say good. I want to say it's it's a brand new thing that uh, a lot of people aren't aware with. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of the the books before, you know, Disney axed them all out, I, I wouldn't imagine a lot of them had to do with the Skywalker saga or the clan or anything you, like that. You would think that, but a lot of it still has to do with that same realm or that same period of time where it's characters that surround the Skywalker saga or like they're the, from the most famous books, like the tales from Jabba's palace, or there's different books like that, where okay. it's ha- it, it has to do with like minor characters in that same, like in those same years. Okay. Um, or it'll, it'll branch off there. There's some books that are, that are previous or far out, but not many. So I don't, I don't know. Like if you look at star Wars, if you ask a casual fan about star Wars, even if they watched all the movies so far, if you ask them what Star Wars is about, they could tell you like, oh, well, the you know the original trilogy was about Luke Skywalker and fighting Darth Vader. And the, the prequel was about, you know, seeing Darth Vader grow up. And this trilogy is about finding new Luke or old Luke Skywalker. Yeah. But yeah. then if you have it something new, that might throw people for a loop. KOTOR? Yeah, but Just I mean. that a movie based on KOTOR. That would be really cool. Really cool. I don't know. Just It's just, it's, it's, it's so unexplored. I can't even fathom what they could do. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you can't even really expect anything. You can't say, oh, well, they can go this way, they can go that way, because one, there's not much to go off of, and two, there's an infinite way they, they can go. Yeah. Possibilities. So what do you think about Ryan Johnson helming this thing? I have no idea who the guy is. Uh, if The Last Jedi does great, then cool. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, I've, what I've read is that there's a possibility he'll be helming on three, but he's definitely doing the first one. Not necessarily guaranteed he's doing the second and the third installment. Doing the J.J. Abrams thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, So, I mean, the, the guy the guy might be the guy, but I don't know if you want to throw a whole trilogy at him like it just it just it just seems scary that you're gonna put put this on one person and you know i look at like the original trilogy and yes there's a lot of good there with the way george lucas helmed a lot of that but you that know, was his baby right but that time has passed like star wars has grown so big that i don't know if you can just say hey you know here here you go guy like just do with it what you will especially something as like precarious as a whole new arc for star wars and he's just writing it right I think he's directing as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's not much. I'm look. I'm looking at his IMDb. He got some Breaking Bad episodes, some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's, Breaking Bad did good. Yeah. So no. Star Wars is gonna be great. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, good storytelling. I mean, in, until Last Jedi <laughs> drops, it's kind of an unknown unknown, really, if this guy is gonna be be the one to carry the torch, if you will. The carry, Force, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> carry the lightsaber, if you will, forward. Um. So, I mean, we'll see, but yeah, that's all, that's all I got, man. I'm just, I'm scared, scared at this point. I think everyone will, will be scared because that first movie, brand new, unknown territory, you don't know if it's going to be good or bad, and whether it does well or not really sets the tone for how the next two pan out. Like, if episode seven did really bad, there wouldn't be as much hype for episode eight, I don't think. It would still be there, but not as many people be like, oh, man, can't wait to go see it in December. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right. The, the what I, what I see is that Star Wars in Disney's hands has done well. You know, Rogue One was a successful film. It was fun for the most part, and it was good film for the most part. There are some things I think that you can nitpick and say, "Oh, it's not Star Wars. It's very different." Force Awakens was a fun film. It was good for the most part, but but both of these films and probably Last Jedi as well. I can't speak on that yet. It's not in December, but both of these films were like the same thing. Like as far as what Star Wars did in the past, did the same thing again. Yep. So yeah. Disney hasn't moved Star Wars forward in two films. How do I know they're going to be able to do that when they jump to new stuff? Are they going to keep doing the same thing? Who knows? Well, I, I would say I'd give them the benefit of the doubt. This is them going a whole new direction. It's a whole new story, a whole new kind of storyline where it's, you, you can't really copy the, the Death Star again and a whole new setting with new characters. I mean, we probably could. could have said that if we had this podcast when Force Awakens came out. You can't do the Death Star again, and then they did. I feel like we, I feel like we gave them the benefit of the doubt, and they didn't do bad, but they didn't, they didn't show me new. So, I don't know. That's where I'm at. I say in their defense, it's, I mean, with the trilogy we have right now, it's still in the Skywalker territories, so... They did the Death Star again. Okay, that, you know, not great. It was still fun. 
But, I mean, this is completely away from anything else. This is something completely new. We'll see. All right. Well, that's what we got on Star Wars, guys, and, the, and their new trilogy. So let us know what you guys think of the announcement for the new Star Wars trilogy and Ryan Johnson, uh, you know, potentially helming at least one, if not all three of the films. Um, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Reach out to us. Contact at scspodcast.net. All right, guys, time for the speed run. So every week we'll break down 10 news stories and fun facts that didn't make, uh, didn't quite make it for a full segment. We give ourselves one minute per topic before we move on to the next one. Finished or not. Gotta go fast. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. In the speed run. Netflix will no longer have and premiere new Marvel TV shows as Disney will now air all new shows on their upcoming streaming service. Ha! We saw this I mean, why, why ha? I, I I don't know. I, I like it. You you like sticking it to Netflix? I like sticking it to the people that don't like Disney. But this yeah, Netflix doesn't dislike Disney. No, no. But the people are like, oh, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get the Disney streaming service. Oh wait, but how am I gonna watch the new Daredevil? Wow, those are probably that's the people mean... that don't care about it. I saw the funniest. Oh, thing that's on... mean. That you're saying that to me. What? Of all the times, like, I just love how tr- the Trix Rabbit never got his tricks. Yeah, but he's a fictitious character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a funny skit in one of the newest uh, South Park episodes where the boy was trying to get a show on Netflix. And they call like Netflix customer service. And the guy was like, Netflix, you're greenlit. What's your, what's your show called? <laughs> Netflix, you're greenlit. What's your show called? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the greeting. <laughs> yeah. Every show just good to go, man. That was funny. It was really funny, and, and their their one show got canceled. But it was uh, it was quite a funny little skit. They're 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 good at that. Oh, stuff. That's a good joke. Uh, yeah, but in all, in all seriousness, we saw this coming, like you said, Joshua. And uh, Netflix, man, get on your game because you're not going to be able to pull from Disney any anymore. No, this is going to have a next. Warner Bros. and the Tolkien Estate are discussing a possible Lord of the Rings television series. Yeah, it could be exciting. There's there's a lot of content. There's a lot of a lot of side books, but no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, think about think about how much they put into that movie hours and hours. Like it's like it's one of the longest trilogies ever. What yeah. more could you tell yeah, the me? Hobbit. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, I don't even <laughs> want to think about. It. I didn't. I hated that trilogy. one book, three movies. Right. There, there's there's not enough for a, a trilogy, a series. No. Well, they'll make enough. Like oh, who yeah. who would who would it follow? Like Legolas, maybe a whole new character, young uh, Gandalf, whoever's whoever like, in Shadow of War, Kellogg's Blueberry. <laughs> I just, I just don't, I don't want this, man. Like, this is not for me. This not will be me. a super long running series. But I mean, it, it could expand more on like the Rangers instead of it being so Hobbit centric. Because I think a lot of these have been Hobbit centric. I'm right. sick of Hobbits. Right. Uh, it would be nice to see what else the world has and not follow Hobbits. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I don't. I don't need any more Lord of the Rings on the TV. You know what? Like an hour long show. A, what AMC could be good. It's not my precious. Ah, uh, next. Turtle Power, alongside Enchantress and the Atom, Injustice Two will be receiving the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a playable character. That is sick. Just, just really quick. You, you really didn't. Ha- you, you had a chance to say like Turtle shut Power it, with some. It. Nope. Nope. Turtle Power alongside Enchant... No. <laughs> but, I mean, this is really cool. I, I was questioning how... Like, was it just Raph? Because if you watch a trailer, you know, you see a side get thrown on the ground. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's that's Raph. It's Elektra. And, and then uh, you see the other turtles just drop down. I'm like, wow, you're actually going to have your choice of which turtle you want. Maybe. We don't know yet. Uh, it seems like it's going to be... They're going to be one playable character. What it could be is that, you know, you just change uh, gear. Uh, I mean, they'll do exactly what the, night, the Nightwing thing I is. I think it'll or- be a trait. I think I think it's gonna no, be no, no, no. where all. all of them will fight as one in some way because they made a point for Leo to say, "Hold on, Mikey, we we fight as one or we fight as a team." I see that, but I think that's just because they're all going to be playable. That's what I'm saying. I think special moves will swap out turtles and then yes, have that would styles. be cool. Okay, yeah, they, I'm, I'm they okay will be that. they will be one player. Yeah, you, you'll have you, you won't be able to say I picked Donatello. It'll like, be turtles. But then that changes the gear thing because how are you gonna? I mean, if you want your Michelangelo to be this way, but you know he won't be. You put gear on, and all the turtles yep. will have that gear. I, yep, I have I a feeling gear is gonna play a big part in which character you play. Possibly, but uh, a special move changing turtles, I think, is really cool too. I also, also Enchantress and Adam. Uh, before no we one cares about them. I also like the fact that uh, Donatello didn't have a speak. Next, yeah, look, he's sad now. Thunder. Brian Michael Bendis, creator of Jessica Jones, Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 
and the man responsible for making the Avengers relevant in comics, has signed a multi-year exclusive deal with DC Comics. Whoa! So, uh... Jumping ship. This, this is big on a lot of levels, and I'll, I'll tell you that as a comic reader, I can let you know that over the last decade, uh, Bendis has pretty much been the one that has transformed Marvel Comics. He is responsible for all the big storylines. He's responsible for literally, literally making the Avengers a, a, a relevant uh, super team. Um, you know, before the movies that, didn't do that? Hmm? The movies didn't do that? No, he, he made them relevant to have their movies. Had it not oh. been for him, oh. they, they they were a B or even a C team. The X Men were the big team. Fantastic Four had, were a team in comics. No one cared about the Avengers. He brought like Spider Man to be a v- Avenger for the first time. Tons of stuff. That's anyway, cool. this guy is big. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping this will be great for DC. Um, I, I would imagine like when it comes to Marvel sales and DC sales, maybe DC is lacking uh, when it comes to comics. DC has does well with Batman, but that's it. Yeah, you yeah. think he'll bring some like lower like B or C names or teams into the forefront? Oh god, okay, real quick. What I think is going to do is DC has great writers, but they don't have a great overarching like. Next, ooh, save this for another topic. Uh, the IOC International Olympic Committee released a statement that they officially support and agree that esports are considered legitimate sports. All right, well, that shuts us up for that uh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, they listen to us. They're like, no, Super Call Squad, we agree with you. We think they are esports. They are really sports. No, I think most of us are on the other side. Yeah, I know. Uh, I okay. Know. okay. Um, so, uh, we will be seeing video games in the Olympics. Possibly. There's still, like, rules and whatever regulations that they have to file. and well, only, only Connect games? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> if, if Wii Connect sports? That would be cool. No, I mean, we, we disagree because we said it's not, like, academically as far as, like, athletics, but as far as, like, brain power and things like that, there, there's a thing there. I mean, it's yeah. cool that we're getting acknowledgement for games. Definitely. And they're considering, considering it to be competitive, but I don't, I don't know if they seriously take it as a competitive sport like we do when we're talking about physical activity. I would like to hear their reasonings, like, why, what, what they think and what they came to terms with. I won't watch it. <laughs> I mean, I, I won't. I, I watch the Olympics when I can, and if esports is on while the Olympics is on, I'll watch it. Next. The Force is strong with Disney as they place never before seen requirements on theater chains showing Star Wars The Last Jedi. 65% of all ticket profits and a must play four week commitment of the largest theater on top of other agreements are required. Yeah, this is a scumbag move. So typically, uh, when a movie chain sells a movie ticket, the production studio that made that movie gets about 55 to 60 percent of that ticket sale. Disney is saying we get 65. They got to also have all their their biggest theater in that movie theater chain has to play Star Wars for four weeks. God, as far as butts and seats. Oh, man. Or you can't have this movie. On top of the fact as well, you know, we said that there's other agreements. Uh, typically, if a movie theater says sees okay for this upcoming showing at 7:30 or whatever, is only have 20 percent next week, we're gonna go ahead and just cancel that showing. If you cancel that showing, that means that Disney, if they catch that, they will then uh, force you to pay 70 percent of the ticket sales for Star Wars as a, as a penalty. Yeah, Don't cancel their movie. That, well, that's that's ridiculous. Any penalty or any disagreement, they charge you a five percent penalty on on that so, entire. Sale. So think of this. I mean, of course, here we're we're in a suburban metropolitan area, but think of a small town who has like a movie a movie theater that only has two movie movie uh, uh, screens. Yeah. Okay. So I have to show Star Wars for four weeks, but if I only have like you know a thousand people in my town or ten thousand, everyone's watched the freaking movie. Now I'm losing money because I can't put another movie in here for a month. For a month. I mean, there's sucks. no. Come on, Garrett. There's no way you can defend this. This is a I'm, tough I'm, move. I'm, I mean, I don't think it's that bad, but it's not. It's not you know favorable. This is a bad thing. This is a bad thing. I, I don't see it as you know deplorable. They're they're blackmailing movie theaters. Yep, that's what they're doing. I think this is a bad move, and I really hope that it comes to bite him in the butt. Personally, it won't. It won't but it, it, I wish it did. <laughs> well. You set that timer? Uh, I didn't. I'm waiting for it to go off, and it didn't. So, all right, we probably have like ten seconds. Star Wars is going to be good. I hope so. We'll see. In all theaters. Did you watch the trailer? No, no, I didn't watch the trailer. I walked. I specifically walked out of the theater. Next, Phil Spencer says. The, Phil Phil Spencer says the Xbox One X will output at 1440p resolution when connected to a 1440p monitor. I think this is huge, honestly, because many many 
gamers who choose PC, they do so because they get a better frame rate and resolution using their PC and a gaming monitor that you cannot get with a console and a television. Um, so this is going to be big to maybe pull some people into using an Xbox One X who just normally wouldn't. Yeah, I said before that you know Microsoft is trying to future-proof this console so that way they don't have to make another console two to four years from now. And it looks like this is something that they kind of planned in advance, which I think is great. I think we're going to see another console in two years anyway. A lot of analysts are saying that the next console console generation pops up in two to three years. Yeah, I've read that too. And I I think that's what's going to happen, sadly enough. I think Xbox One and PS4 will be gone and something new will be here in three years. I literally don't care. But if you notice, Xbox One X is an acronym for Xbox. Yeah. 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 Yay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they called it that. I mean, I I guess. Yeah. We kind of knew that. We did. Did we? Yeah. Next. The iPhone X isn't holding up to the test. Streamers and reviewers are learning that the 10th anniversary phone easily cracks and shatters after being dropped from heights most other versions have endured easily. There's a lot of people on social media showing their $1,000 phone just shattered. Ha ha ha. I mean, is it... Should have put a, should have put a case on it. Is it worth it for the views? If you like it, then you should have put a case on it. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So uh, without any type of Apple Care warranty, the front screen is like $260 to replace, and the back is over 500 After you spent $1,000 plus. Yep. I mean, it's your fault if you didn't go get a $20 case for your $1,000 phone. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's like buying a Ferrari, but not having like a you know a garage or a carport or anything, or insurance. Kinda, yeah, yeah. And then it rains <laughs> hail and yeah. dust storm. That's, that's just bad economics, right? <laughs> that's just poor planning, man. <laughs> I mean, Johnny, you said you were looking to get one of these. Next, I will. Next, early screenings are giving mixed reviews on Justice League, with many saying the movie is light on story but big on fun. Okay, that's that's something. I mean, that's, not good. that's not good for a comic book movie that doesn't have a story. I mean, it has a story. Or They're not a good one. Probably saying they got a lot of a lot of holes in them. It it seems like movie these comic book movies are going back into like like the fun, easygoing vibe that they were like in the past, and they're moving away from the dark stuff. I mean, Spider Man Homecoming very light. Wonder yeah. Woman for the most part it wasn't super heavy. Um, Thor three was very very light, light hearted. So yeah, you know it was. <sighs> what I yeah. what I've read is uh, the people that have seen the early screenings they are really enjoying that the heroes actually portray themselves as likable heroes and the team works well together versus just a bunch of people thrown in a movie. That's good. That is good. I mean, they should have a rapport and and, a, and a, some sort of chemistry because they're the freaking Justice League. So I mean, yay. Yeah, I mean, as actors, they I'm told, or what I've seen, they pull they pull off pretty well. That's right. Which, which Tomatoes, is good uh, put out next. A meeting between Disney and Fox has revealed a possible deal being brokered that would end with Disney owning many of 21st Century Fox's movie rights and production studios. Yeah, that's the biggest thing here. Is that Fantastic Four? That <laughs> if, if this does happen, <laughs> wow. Um, if this does happen, then they Marvel and Disney would essentially would would own the movie rights for Fantastic Four and X Men. This will not happen. You don't think so? No, no. So you don't think this is gonna buy up this this merger is gonna happen? I think Twenty First Century Fox might have been looking to, to have the conversation because Disney Disney desperately wants these things back, like desperately. So they probably wanted to see what they were gonna bring to the table. And there's, there's not – Disney would have to give them so much, so much money. Um, yeah. Also, I think that because it would also include so many other production studios, <clears throat> this would be viewed by the by the Supreme Court as a conglomerate, you know, as, as, as a monopoly. Uh-huh. You know, um, and it, would, it wouldn't happen. They own everything. And we, don't, we don't like that, do we? We don't like that. No. Police. No. Monopoly is not a good thing. Unless you own all the property, then, then you're okay. But the court doesn't want that. No, they I don't. don't. I don't know. I think it would be really cool. If uh, Disney bought out Fox, Fox can keep Gambit. Well, keep in mind they're only going to be buying certain things from their movie productions uh, legally. Again, based yeah. on conglomerates and monopolies, they can't. They cannot own any of their um, their their TV broadcasting legally. Uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, they can't buy each other out legally. Okay. okay. So, and all right, guys. Well, that is our speed run. 
I did it right. Get off my back. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Give us some quick some quick topics for next week's speed run. You know how to contact us. Contact at scspodcast.net is the email. And uh, yeah, catch us there. It's easier when you do all the homework you can study. <laughs> I suppose so. All right, our last gaming segment. Name the game. Three video games, two competing hosts, and clues that lead to the correct answer. Use your wits, match the clues, and name the game. So I lost last week with this, and uh, so it's it's on me. So good luck, gentlemen. Okay. Bring it. This game is based off an extremely popular 1980s movie franchise. Metal Gear. No. There's a movie franchise on that? Uh, Street Fighter. No. Really? Street Fighter? 1980s movie franchise? I just threw out a guess. I didn't know. You know me. I do random guesses. Uh, Escape from L.A. has a character. Run. Snake Blisken. Here's ne- next. Next. Here's the next. Uh, <laughs> next clue. Run, hide, survive. Aliens. I need the full title. Alien Isolation. That's correct. One for Garrett. Game two. This game is two bros throwing down. Double Dragon. Damn it. No. Okay. Good. Oh, it's gonna be something super dumb. Uh, I'm gonna say bad dudes. No. Use cover to take the heat off of Army of Two. That's correct. That's one for Garrett, one for Joshua. Back to back, Salem. Oh, yeah, cool. I was going to say that too, but I thought one of you would get it immediately. <laughs> uh, this game is a dystopian future in which North Korea has taken over the United States. Home front. That's correct. I wouldn't have gotten that one. All right. I was going to say something stupid like Dishonored or Wolfenstein. I almost said or, Homeland. But well, that that is uh, correct for Garrett. So that's two to one. So Garrett takes this one. Um Good job, dude. I honestly didn't think either of you would know that about Homefront. Yeah, I didn't know it. I did. What was the next clue? Obviously. The next clue? Mm. I was going to say Kim Jong-un probably loves this game. <laughs> <laughs> Just the fact that North Korea took over. Yeah, but um, yeah, so that is a uh, name the game. Hopefully you guys did well out there and uh, give us some ideas, some themes for next week's name the game. Garrett escapes most of the homework. Yeah, I, know. I got the one that rotates. I guess I'm better as a host. All right, guys, time for listener mail. We read your mail and you you listen to oh, the mail. Is that how it works? Pretty much. Oh, okay. All right, so email number one, go ahead and uh, hit that one, uh, Garrett. Jordan asks us, Thor Ragnarok or Th- Ragnar sucked? So this is assuming everybody's seen Thor. We've all seen Thor. Well, I told you last time I didn't see it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, remember last week Garrett said he saw it. I don't oh, think you, you told said- me that long story about yeah. how you didn't see it. Yes, yeah. I remember now. Did, did you I, end up seeing it? Yes, I did. God, that's, that's why? Go. I'm just saying that that's what my <laughs> intro was. My my favorite line in that in that scene in that movie. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. Skip over 15 seconds when is Loki is uh, talking to Thor and they're like, "Oh, you're gonna do the thing. We got to do the get help. We got to do the get help. Get there. You go. Got to do the get I'm, help. I'm not doing get help. <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right, we need to answer Jordan's question. Uh, is there a third option? I'll go last. Oh. Is there a third he option? He asked us a specific question. We need to answer it. I would choose Ragnarok over... It didn't suck. It didn't suck. Hey, guys. I got this spaceship. You want to overthrow? You want to come? Yeah, we got we got this resistance thing. This movie was awesome. That's not what he asked you. This movie, Thor, is renamed Thor Ragnarok. This movie, Ragnar sucked. You didn't like it? Mm-hmm. I of course did not. you didn't like it. It's Johnny. No, no. I wouldn't want to like it. I did not like it. I did not. What was your problem with it? What was one of your problems with it? A lot of problem with it. I thought it was just too jokey. I really I really don't see Thor as a jokey character making jokes and quips. I see him as very regal and royalty. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect Black Panther to make a bunch of jokes and he's a king. Thor is a god. Why would he He's not Loki. He's the he's a very regal royal, not full of himself, but you know, honorable man. He's not this jokey. Let me play around. He's not Chris Pratt. He's not Star Lord. And I felt they made him too much of Star Lord and, and too little of Thor. And I also felt even if they want to throw some comedy in, there was never points where he was just like serious. Like the whole movie, everyone had the drop on him. He was always no, 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 no. Don't do that to me. No, 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 no. My hair. Throw me here. Toss me there. Shock me to death. Like damn like can you make him be a god for even sometimes well he felt like he was stripped down to zero so okay and they didn't strip down to zero and like break him down as a character with like his angst and his heartbroken or like him 
having PTSD as, as one of our listeners emailed us once and as, as an option for his comedy. They never showed any of that. He barely even cared about, about the hammer. He, it, it barely, he barely even spoke about losing the hammer. Yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't yeah. have time to, to go through all that. If, 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 if you, if he would have lost, like, I don't know. And I, yeah. If someone important to him would have died, like his dad did, he mentioned that a little bit. And even then, he barely mentioned that. The Valkyrie had more remorse. That's a bad thing. Well, yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I'm like, it was it was just too jokey. And I don't think it should have been. I think there was, it took way too many uh, traits and tropes from Guardians of the Galaxy. Agreed. With especially the jokes, for sure. All the lights and the poppiness. Uh, I thought it was okay, but I thought it, it didn't isolate itself as its own identity i think it was essentially a spinoff of guardians of the galaxy as a thor movie other other than thor one and two this was the worst marvel film and that's still that's still saying something like it's not about to ask you would you rather watch thor two or no i'd I'd rather watch thor ragnarok but if i had to rate the films thor one and two would be somewhere at the very bottom and thor three would be just above those you like one either it was okay. It wasn't great. I thought the movie was fun. It definitely had a lot of fun moments. There were good fun moments, and I wish they'd have had some substance in between all yeah, that fun. They didn't have any of that. They had a lot of lot of callbacks. The Willy Wonka callback. That was, was awesome. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, freaking yeah. awesome. So, so tell me, this is this is what, how I felt. So, um, Carl Urban's character when he jumps out of the plane at the end and he's on top of all those monsters. Tell me that didn't seem like a Doom reference to you when he's got his guns. It didn't seem like a Doom reference no. to me. So I, the cover of Doom, you know how the Doom guy's sitting over there and he's yeah. shooting his guns at everyone else coming on S- to a pile there. of monsters? Uh-huh. That's what that scene looked like to me. So I don't I don't know if they purposely did that. I got more of a Duke Nukem 3D. I mean, it's the same thing, but he was literally in the Doom movie. <laughs> so real quick before I ask Garrett, Joshua, you seem to agree with me on a lot of the points. Do you, did you really like it? Like you seem, But you agree with me on everything. Yeah, it's definitely got its flaws, but you could still like a movie that just has terrible like plot holes like like for me i didn't think suicide squad was like the worst movie ever ever Fair compared to you guys so i i thought it was in for me it was definitely enjoyable uh but there are some things i didn't like about it i i picked this movie over guardians too okay so why do you like it garrett i thought it was funny i thought there was a good mix of action i'm not all about action honestly action is probably one of the least things i care about in the movie but it had some of that uh the music was awesome uh I, it was an enjoyable movie to me. I felt Jeff Goldblum did a, a great job. <laughs> uh, I, I like the characters a lot, and it was an enjoyable film for me. Uh, now I'm not looking at it like like Thor should have not been this way because I, I can agree. I can agree with that. That Thor isn't you know the person I think to or, or come to think of when it comes to like comedy and and being funny. But I felt it worked. Uh, it was still enjoyable. Okay. I guess I guess the difference with with it as yes i think i think there were a lot of good things in the movie as far as fun like the movie had great fun like the like you mentioned the Willy wonka thing uh, <laughs> oh god i i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't stop laughing when he did the black widow thing sun's getting real low <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting real low now it's getting Just kept doing that when he was following him sun's getting low <laughs> <laughs> It's like, he yeah, shut really, up. Just, everything's really fine. Scared. Sun's coming down. <laughs> <laughs> and he was trying so hard. I, I died. I died. Uh, there, there were, it was fun. It was a good movie as far as like what they did with their bits. They had great bits. A lot of them. But th- it was all bits. It was all jokes. And I'm yeah, like, why I is mean, there nothing? Beginning of the movie, he's, you know, chained up and running around talking to, I, I think his name was Satur or, you know, the, the fire guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's swinging around in the chain and then he's like, okay, hold on, hold on. Stop talking. Stop talking. Wait till I come back around. You know, that kind of thing. That was yeah. funny the first time. And then after that, I was like, no. See, but I, I feel like that, like that, that wouldn't be Thor. Okay. Yeah, so I, yep. I agree with that. But like the sun's getting real low. That could be Thor because he could try to seriously do what he saw someone do to calm this beast down. Not really understanding <laughs> that it's like a love thing, but just the, these are the words I say. Yeah, That's yeah. why that was funny. But yeah. him like, you know, teasing someone Chris Pratt style, mm, a little much for me. So a yeah. uh, couple quick things real quick. Uh, I think the second funniest thing for me was Banner hitting the bridge. I thought that was like hilarious. <laughs> when he when he, when he jumped out, out at the end, he's like, oh, see, when he's talking to Valkyrie, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you'll see right now. And he just collapses <laughs> on the bridge. He's all folded over like a family guy. Character. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Um, that was funny. Uh, him getting tossed around like Thor, like Loki did in the, in the first Avengers. I thought that was That's funny. how it feels. Yeah. 
Um, I really despise, and again, this is spoiler territory, but we already said that. Um, I really despise how they took the end credit scene from, was it Age of Ultron? Uh, and they essentially copied that into this movie. The, it was the same scenes. exact end credit scene yeah. um, put into Thor, right? Yeah. I, and I then he's that. never in the movie again. Yeah, but I it felt was, that was okay because, I mean, some people were concerned that there was going to be too many characters. Or, or Johnny, I think you were a little worried that there'd be just too much star power in here. So having Doctor Strange be a cameo, I felt was much better than yeah having him join the team and you know end up on sakar it was just a setup to to me that i just didn't like how they ripped the credit scene no i I agree with that i can agree with that i i think it was cool that dr strange was just a cameo but again i think it was the wrong cameo like him treating thor like was yeah it's i'm excuse my language but it's thor he is the god there's no way he let this man treat him that way especially before he had lost his hammer he's on his high point yeah i mean his umbrella I mean, his, umbrella. his umbrella, yeah. So I, I, I couldn't, mm, I couldn't get down with that. So yeah, we spent a lot of time on this, but I think it was just a mini review. We just quickly that was did. our Thor review. Yeah, but the movie was fun. I can say that. I just, I don't think it was a good movie. Would you buy it? No, okay. no, I wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, thanks, Jordan. Uh, finally, now going to email number two, uh, Joshua. That's all you, brother. All right. This email is from Stephen. You're gonna get your shine right now. Stephen asks. Assassin's Creed Origins is the change and update to the series that was needed two to three years ago. The changes made are good, and they push the series forward in great ways, except one. The Assassins are now just Spider-Man. It used to require at least a little bit of precision and effort to climb, jump around, and scale buildings. Now the only thing you need to climb to do it. The only thing you need to climb any structure is just make the choice to do so. It takes tons of fun away from the parkour. I didn't think about that, but I agree. Uh, it didn't really bother me. I, 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 I read this and I, I read them a little bit before you guys, I'm setting these up. And I then played the game a couple of days later after I put this or after I read the email. And yeah, you can climb anything. You can climb random walls, trees, uh, things that there are no, there are no handholds on, but th- yeah. there's, there's no surface in the game that you can't climb. And that's, you just point the stick. Yes. Yeah, so you just point and he can climb literally anything. I mean, kind of like Link in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. But this just is no not that. Meter. Yeah, but the difference was that had never been done before in that game. Yeah. Where this one, it, it does it so much that it takes away from you actually having to try. There used to be rules as to what you could climb. Like, you couldn't just run it. Like, there would be a point if you try to run up a wall that had no handholds, you would run up two, three feet and then fall down. Yeah. You'd have to, you'd have to use your skill to parkour. And now he, he is right. He's right. I, yeah, I, I agree with Steven, absolutely, but it doesn't bother me. Yeah, you, don't, you just don't care. Yeah. It's, okay, that's fair. I mean, you don't have to care, but okay. I, I don't. I don't disagree, Stephen. It doesn't. I guess I kind of agree with Gary. It, it doesn't break the game for me, but it is kind of sad that they just made it easy mode. I mean, just make up yeah. your own obstacles. Be like, oh no, I, I better not climb there. I'll, I'll use this one over here. You know, <laughs> make 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 a. You do you, Stephen. Well, he's trying, and they they took his they took it away. Oh, they just gave him too much. Yeah, they gave him too much choice. Well, yeah, sorry, Stephen. I do agree, and it does. It it's kind of bad. It's kind of. They watered it down. All right. Well, thank you for your emails, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, last week's listener question. I don't even know what that was. Uh, that was me. Uh, if you can make another Assassin's Creed game in any uh, time or place, where would you put it? Uh huh. There's the one that everybody wants. Yeah. Feel Japan. There you go. Yeah, everybody let's, wants. Let's pick another one. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no because one. Picked everybody that one. literally wants Feel Japan. I honestly would prefer to finally see it in just modern day. They just keep playing around with it. They keep showing people like go into the past and then kind of bleed into the future or back to themselves. Just just do one modern day. Let's see how that looks. Like the movie. But better. <laughs> the end of the movie. But what if better. the modern day animus is oh it's not because we've seen the animus in modern day, but if yeah. it's the claw. Mm-hmm. I don't want the claw. No, no. Okay. Um I mean that would be pretty interesting. Um I think there'd be too much technology for it to be exciting, I guess. Because I mean, well, I'm gonna climb a McDonald's. You know, there's no real, like, I'm going to assassinate the McDonald's manager because he's working for Absurgo. <laughs> I mean, there's people that don't work at McDonald's. <laughs> kind of generalizing. Yeah, no, true. Okay. Uh, modern. I, I would actually, and this is going to contradict what I just said, of the future. <laughs> like, neon lights and just flying cars and a cool, like, assassin's tech suit with lasers on it, like from Tron. Wow. I think that'd be pretty cool. So not modern, but no, no, no. postmodern. Yeah. This guy took mine. No, definitely uh definitely future and it could be some type of, you know, time travel trickery whatever and you're just kind of stuck there, 
but you uh-huh. learn what your history has done. Quantum and leap. It either, <laughs> there you go. That's, that's, that's deep cut. And you either your history, your lineage went down a certain path and it, it's either good or bad. And probably just, you know, the brotherhood is gone and they created their own separate faction. And now you have two factions in the brotherhood. And whoa, 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 whoa. The story's already convoluted enough. We don't need. That's that's what Assassin's Creed and some other games are about. You just. It's too much to handle sometimes. Yes, no, I mean, I could see that like a branch of these of, of the Brotherhood was is like, no, we we can take it to the next level. You know, they're working on some like evil stuff that Third gets branch. results. And okay. that's like a dark cult kind of thing. Yeah, and then Fair you're enough. against yeah. the Brotherhood and the Templars. It's free ideas, Ubisoft. Fair enough. Maybe not free. No, Talk no, to no, us first. You can't use these. <laughs> pay us our royalties. <laughs> yep. All right. So thank you, uh, everyone who emailed us. Uh, and uh, next week, listener question. All right. Well. I've been, uh, I'm pretty excited because, uh, I'm kickstarting two D and D groups, uh, one on Thursday nights, one on Saturday mornings. So I'm having fun with that or I will. Uh, so this is going to be kind of linked to that. So if you could choose one game to make into a tabletop role playing game, what game would that be? What game universe would you turn into a Dungeons and Dragons style role playing game? That's next week's listener question. Make sure you email us contact at scspodcast.net or reach out to us on Twitter at Super Co-op Squad so we can uh, get your answers and we'll re- we will read them on air for you. All right, so it is time for the end game boss fight. So at the end of every episode, we'll talk about uh, what's going on, what's going on with us outside the podcast, and we'll give each other end game bosses to figure out or end game scenarios to figure out how to defeat uh by the next episode and we'll go over how we defeated or finished last week's uh boss and and scenarios uh so i already just kind of i guess spoiled it i'm doing my D leagues i'm super excited dming my saturday league and uh, my thursday league i'll be uh a, a pc so i'm very excited to have both op- an opportunity to do both things um it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh have some hardcore players in here who are or, or, i guess avid players many of them haven't played very much um, but yeah, it's going to be super fun, man. So that's what I'm excited for. Also, I'm very excited that Magic the Gathering has its new, uh, set finally released Commander 2017 set on, uh, Magic Online. That'll give me, uh, another eight to 15 commanders. There's two that I'm just so stoked for, Garrett. If you, there's one that you're, I think I sent yeah. you a picture you'll like a lot. So yeah, man, okay. Magic the Gathering. I'm, I'm on it. Wizards uh, of the Coast, you just got me, man. Magic, <laughs> D&D, you got me. You got is, me. Is that Wizards, D&D? Yes. Oh, they own, yeah. they own it. They've been around for so yeah. long. So that's me. Uh, Garrett, uh, last week, I'm sorry, Joshua, last week you gave me, what'd you give me? You are on America's Best Dance Crew, Randy Jackson, ABDC. Oh, yeah. So I had to defeat the, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the Destiny Fire Team chat doing the re-indition of Backstreet's Back. So, so I already I already know how to do it. How to how to how to feed them. All right. Who's your song? Who's your dance routine? What'd you do? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the Gungum style dance. Gungum style. Hey, sexy lady. Whoop 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 whoop. No, no one can. Once you hear that song and someone starts like getting down to it's a. It's a chunky groove, man. It's a good song. It is. It's a good song. So that's how I beat him. They can't compete with I don't understand the lick of it, but it's good. No, but yeah, that he, man gets down. It's like a Japanese anime opening. <laughs> One hit wonder. It mm-hmm. is. So that's how I win. Just like that. Okay. Just when that dong 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 when that comes on, just dong 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 dong. Riding the horse and everything. Dong 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 dong. Yeah, with my hand in the air, just whipping it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. I'll give you that. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. So, uh, yep. Garrett, how was your week? No, should I defeat my boss first? Wait, I, I talked about how I my week, and then I defeated his boss. However you want to do it. Whatever. I figured when, when I started, I'd defeat my boss. All right, Talk Garrett. about my week. Then cool. at the end. All right, cool. How did you defeat your boss? All you, right. You were trapped uh, in a sinking uh, coffin, strapped in there, locked in from the inside, and all you got is uh, a pencil, Twizzler, some string, a paper clip, and a tissue. I'm sorry, and tape. 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 Okay. All right. So this, this is what I do. This is what I do. Yeah, he said it was too much, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I used the pencil. And I kind of, I kind of, like... Work it between my hands and I, and I, and I you know, roll it back and forth, kind of like how you start a fire, a campfire. And I drill a hole into the coffin. Now, water is going to start pouring in. So I get that tape. Bam. Stop that. All right. But now, because there's some water inside, it starts to lift up because cause air. Right. Right. Is that, is that... My wife is listening to this. And <laughs> as a physics teacher, she's just shaking her head. Okay. But not, not all our listeners are physics teachers. 
All right, so this might ruin his exploit. All right, this is movie movie magic. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I can get okay, fair enough. All right, and then, and then I use I use the Twizzler as a straw, and I start drinking all the ocean water. <laughs> that was going to be your celebratory, no. or use that's your snorkel. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was going to use as the okay. snorkel. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I mean, let's just say you do float to the top. You're still trapped in there. Yeah. Well, now I use the paper clip. See? Okay. Yeah, okay. I use the paper clip and then I, I kind of wedge it in, wedge it into the, the the hinges of the coffin, just pop it open. And then what's the string for? Uh, oh, that's just so I can, you know, floss. Yeah, I, I mean, to floss. You gotta yeah, have good. Go. You gotta have good hygiene. <laughs> gotta have good hygiene. There's no excuse for not having good hygiene, no matter where you are. Then you're then about I, to die. Then I use it to uh, rope up a dolphin. And I ride the dolphin to shore. Same, the same only Mario. The only thing that you didn't have was any light source. Like I don't know how you were doing all this in pitch black dark. And his phone was in his pocket. Huh? I didn't give him his phone. He had I, string tape and uh, I pencil. started an underwater fire with the Sponge, with, with the pencil SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> style. All right, cool. All right, uh, how my week is? Uh, still playing a lot of more Mario. Have not turned on Assassin's Creed yet. Trying to get all my power moons now. I believe there's like 800 and something. I'm up to 650, I think. The hell am I supposed to catch up to that? I don't know when I stop playing, I guess. When I, when I move on to Fire Memorials. It's that's rare, that's for, time. rare for one of us to surpass you in a game. Well, just wait till I actually start playing it. There you go. Uh, game is phenomenal still. Um, but enough of that. Finish Stranger Things Season 2. That was good. That As was did good I. Ride. Good. Good. Joshua, you should start Season 1. Yeah, there's a lot of seasons I have to catch up on. <laughs> uh, only issue is now is I don't know what to watch when I'm doing anything, I guess. Like when I'm just trying to chill and, and relax, I, I don't know what to throw on. Didn't they, have some new, they had some new Steven Universe pop up, didn't they? Uh, yeah, Hulu has some Steven Universe. It's, I don't think it's Hulu's caught up to what's airing on, on the network right now, but I think they did get season three. So mm-hmm. I, I should start that. Uh, I'll give me something to do. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Uh, other than that, things I'm looking forward to, not, I guess not much, just more Mario and, uh, you know, Overwatch and eventually Assassin's Creed when, when I'm done with Mario. Cool. Have you finished My Hero yet? My, My Hero Academia? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, to be completely honest, I forgot. And well, there's, there's, next there's show. one episode that I have left in season two. That's it? Yeah. Well, cause I, I caught up with season two and then I just stopped because the sub, had all the episodes, but the dub was gotcha. taking a week late later or something like that. So I put it off and forgot. But now I have one episode to watch of My Hero Aka. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, you guys got my back. Mm-hmm. Finish up My Hero Academia and start Steven Universe. Back to back, Salem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are my army of two. Oh, all right. Moving on. <laughs> Joshua. He says something sweet and you go on. I see something sweet about you and you threaten me by not. <laughs> Getting us me a soda. You called me sweet. I don't want you to call me sweet. Yeah, you're sour now. That's better. <laughs> First right. they're sweet, and then they're sour. Sour Patch Kids. Joshua, how did you handle your 15 Goombas stacked up high? So I came up to him. I saw a little lady Goomba I was trying to flirt with, and there she was go. like, I ain't having that. She mm-hmm. stormed off. Yeah. Then a stack of Goombas started chasing me. I ran around them, and I was like, I can't climb the Goombas. They're going to eat my hands. So I found a ledge I was able to wall jump between, got to the top of that ledge, jumped over them, did a butt stomp, smashed all of their faces in. All 15. Got got, got yeah. a good amount of coins out of that. Yeah, side note, I thought it was really weird how the interaction that the Lady Goomba has when she sees the guy Goombas, she she gets a little too excited. Yeah, <laughs> she, uh, she flirts out a little heart there. And a power move. No, that's not what I'd call it. What are you, what are you talking about? This is a PG show. Okay, I guess I guess I need to go back and play the game again. Send me a GIF. Um, okay, fine. It's pronounced <laughs> GIF, sir? No. No, that's the no, peanut butter. That's what that guy said. The, the creator of them. He's wrong. They're <laughs> GIFs, damn it. GIF is a peanut butter, right? Jiffy. Oh. No, no, it's GIF. Yeah, All right. Skippy. You, yeah. Defeat, you defeated him. Yes, I did. So this week, so I, I saw Thor. We talked about it. Thought it was great. Uh, liked it quite a bit. I played a little bit of Mario Odyssey. I miscalculated my moons last time. I thought I was in the 200s. I was like 140, 160. And now I think I'm. Those at- are rookie numbers, man. You got to step those up. Hey, man, I don't have time to play every single day like <laughs> you've been doing right now. So how you're playing Mario is how I played Zelda Fair. back in the day. Fair. Um, so I, I think I'm at like 230. 
uh, it's 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 still fun. There's a lot of cool little scenarios in there. So I did. So what what you said about the uh, the other power, I other like retroactive power moons. Like I found a random power star. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah I went in a painting and I was like, is that the, is that the castle? <laughs> Retro. And I jumped up yeah. on the chimney and I found one. And even had the the music theme yes. to it too. And I was like, yes. that's cool. I I love love that. Post game stuff is gonna be fun. Post game stuff is gonna be fun. So I I just saw Bowser. He's got a big dragon. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the hell stuff. is he doing with that? There's some stuff going on. And that that's where I stopped. All right. So I'm actually trying not to get extra power moons because I know I'm just gonna be back after post game content. Yeah. So I uh I just kinda go through it as quickly as I can and then come back to it. There you go. There's there's shortcuts in that game that you can do, which is pretty cool. Little little neat little tricks. <laughs> what was the other movie that I just Wanted there was a trailer that I saw in the theater that I wanted to see and I don't remember what the it Denzel was. Washington movie because I want to see that. Uh, I'm iffy about that one. Okay, right, okay. Looks intriguing. You haven't seen Denzel in a movie in a while. Yeah, right? yeah. Since Training Day, I got. You, I, I, did you say you didn't see Training Day? I, did, I still didn't. have not seen Training Dude, Day. Dude, <laughs> dude, go watch it. Go watch it. That that's your next movie you need to watch. And then I haven't said it in a long time. Uh, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, it's it's good. It's, uh, it hasn't it's still been good. that long. It. It has been that long. Go back to the archives. When's the last time I talked about it? Probably Other than the game, maybe two weeks. Ago. Johnny used to give me crap about it all the time. No, it's 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 getting good. It's 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 still keeping up with some of the hype, but it's still fun. So uh, that one's keep on uh, rolling. Johnny, Johnny Meister, how you doing over there, sir? I'm good. I, I was good, so I'm about to receive your boss. <clears throat> Who do you think the strongest video game character in the world is? The You're, Hulk. The Hulk. Okay. Take out the Hulk. You you can't have like a an Avenger type of person, like a video Superman. game character, like 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 maybe like a Zangief, maybe like a Hagar, like big like strong men that aren't like super powered. What's that one that looks like stupid? Who's in Street Fighter Four? Like he walks like a stupid person. Jeez, are you talking about He's a character Hugo? you play? Hugo, about- yes, That's Hugo. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hugo looks stupid. Give him Abigail thought- then. Uh, he, hmm, who? Yeah, Abigail is like dumber than Hugo. Okay, so <laughs> it's fine. We'll pick we'll pick Hugo or or all of them. We'll pick all those big guys. So you are you in go. all you're the in the uh, the strongman competition against Hugo. Oh, sure, we'll say Ag- Abigail Zangief Hagar, and you have to defeat them in the strongman competition challenge. You know, you're pushing tires, you're pulling trucks, you're climbing, you were trying to chop down trees. Okay, maybe with your bare hands. I don't know. Chop them with your bare hands. Yeah. All right. There you go. Strongman how competition. Defeat, how to defeat Hugo. Ultimate muscle. The idiot in strongman competition. <laughs> All right. I got an app for that. All right, Garrett. You you are in the last the last stage of your, your journey. And the last level. Now you got to complete a hot dog eating contest. You got to defeat Joey Chestnut, who is, you know, this year's, uh, Bro- I think it's in Brooklyn, the, the hot dog eating championship, like champion. Okay. He ate like 77 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Yes. You got to defeat that man. Easy. All right. Does that man have a gag reflex? Does that go straight to his gut? What? Not anymore. He doesn't. <laughs> All right. Well, that is, that's your boss, bro. All right. And Joshua, your yeah. boss. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You, you, you're wearing a suit, like a business suit. Okay. All right. Fly. Super yeah, fly. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. You're looking good. Uh, I mean, I know, but <laughs> you're in the conference room. For a big video game corporation. Okay. Like maybe like Activision. Okay. You have to figure out how to sell your game to Activision. Your game is rock, paper, scissors. A <laughs> video game. <laughs> sell that to Activision. Okay. Can I, can I have the same app that you used when Johnny gave you that? I didn't give him that. Yeah, you did. No. Rock, paper, scissors champion. That I've... Oh, that, that was he me. had, he had was to me. beat someone. Yeah, yeah. Can I use that same type of app? Was I going to sell your game? No. Uh, I guess <laughs> we'll find out next week. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is our show this week. Uh, as always, we hope you enjoyed yourself. You enjoyed what we're talking about in our opinions. We, of course, would love to hear your opinions. Uh, we love getting feedback. We love hearing uh, from our audience, guys. It's always a treat. Uh, get an email or a tweet or whatever, and just chat with you guys about games or whatever. So uh, you know, hit us up. 
Uh, you can do that by reaching out to us at contact at scspodcast.net. That's our email address. You can also find us on Twitter at Super Co-op Squad. Uh, those are both going to be available in our show notes. It's also going to be available in the summary of wherever you happen to be listening to this episode. So just click those links, guys. It'll take you right to where you can chat with us. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely reach out and get back to you and, and have some fun chatting. Um, if you would like to help the podcast, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, first and foremost, uh, give us a review on iTunes, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, where we can find us on Spotify, wherever you're listening to us, guys, go ahead and, and, and give us, give us a shout out. It helps other people who enjoy the same things that you do help, help find the show. So you're helping someone else. It also helps us get a little bit, uh, a little bit more, uh, marketing out there and a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, what would you call it? Viewership? Yeah, the, a, a little listenership? bit higher. View, there you go. A little bit higher listenership uh, for our show. So thank you if you could do that for us. It takes like five seconds now through the through the uh, iPod, the iPad or iPhone podcast app. So just knock it out from there. Uh, the second way you can help the show, guys, friends and family, people you know, anyone that you think that you that would enjoy the show the same way you do that you know, give us a shout out. Let them know. Hey, I got a sick podcast. Johnny's like super awesome. Garrett's super funny. Joshua's a mix of both of them. And kind of, he's the decider. Like, let him know who the, let him know about the decider. The decider. I'm the one who really gets to choose the power. <laughs> the cider. <laughs> I like cider. Apple cider. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, oh. yeah, do that, guys. Um, and, and lastly, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash super co op squad. There you can go ahead and uh, subscribe to be a patron for the show and uh, support the show with a couple of bucks. If you do have time and the ability to do that, we would really appreciate that. That helps us get con, that helps us get uh, additional additional equipment it also helps us uh with any any uh, costs we have for our server uh for hosting costs because that does cost money guys um so if you can do that that helps as well guys but honestly and like i say every week thank you first and foremost for just listening to our show just being a part of what we're doing and 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 having fun with us we appreciate that more than anything everything else is just gravy on top guys um other than that guys uh, you can reach out to us again and chat with us individually as well you can find me at johnny mac 24 you can find me at GJL3275. And I'm at Joshua underscore four underscore life. All right, guys. Well, as always, we'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Mac. I'm Garrett Masters. I'm Joshua. No last name. Like Tupac. He, his last name was Shakur. <laughs> <laughs> see, see you next week, guys. I messed up. <laughs>